gentle marketers. Welcome to episode 99 of the Gentle Business Revolution podcast, the show where we talk about marketing your business by disrupting the current marketing paradigm and changing it to a gentler approach, one that's based on your values, on empathy and kindness. I'm Sarah Znakroce, I'm the host here, and you know that you're in the right place if you are a heart-centered entrepreneur or change maker who is looking for a different, a better way to market your business. Or you might also be a marketing impact pioneer, so that's someone who's working in an organization for a company who does business for good and you're convinced that there has to be a better way to market your business or not your business, but to, to market in your business to, to reach your customers. As I've hinted at over the past few episodes, this is the final episode under the current Gentle Business Revolution name. On today's episode, I'll tell you the story behind the name change, celebrate the 99 episodes, and give you an idea of what you can expect going forward. So let's start with the celebration, 99 episodes that I'm really proud of. I'm super happy to have come this far far, and really conversations with fellow gentle marketers or marketing impact pioneers that I've learned so much from. If you are a fellow podcaster or maybe you've just heard this say before, a, a podcast is a lot of work but is also a lot of joy and it fulfills one of my top five values, which is curiosity. I love learning from my guests and learn something new on each episode. Just last week's episode, for example, with Emma Louise was such a big aha that I asked her if I could include her idea in my upcoming book about gentle selling. So if you haven't heard that episode yet, it's episode 98. So sarasinacroce.com forward slash GBR98. So yes, I love podcasting. And even though it costs me more money currently than it makes because I'm not running ads and I can't stand them and I can't stand the, the fake sponsorships, um, I see it as my way of giving back. And of course, I also consider it marketing. And marketing costs either money or it costs time. So I might as well spend it in a joyful way. And I am. So yes, really, really happy with these 99 episodes of the Gentle Business Revolution podcast. It's hard to pick a favorite episode, but if I had to, I'd probably pick my conversations with Penny Pierce about the seven P's of gentle marketing and a change in perception. Penny is a clairvoyant visionary and an author of several books and someone I now consider a friend. And in June 2020, we recorded a series of six episodes about my seven P's of gentle marketing So going around the mandala, the one-page marketing plan, if you don't have yours yet, hurry up and go grab it at sarazanacroche.com forward slash one page, the number one and page. And yeah, and her view of the change towards a more intuitive age. So it's quite woo-woo. Like it's it's funny because I'm the grounded one. I'm like, okay, I need to bring you back down to earth here, Penny, because she can go really out there and fascinating concepts that she's sharing. So it's quite woo-woo. If that's your cup of tea, you can view or listen to these episodes at sarasanacroce.com forward slash penny. And that is P-E-N-N-E-Y. But there are so many other great episodes. That's the beautiful thing. If you handpick your guests and don't just do a daily show with whomever comes your way, you know, whomever pitches you the latest uh, email marketing scam, or, you know, you really have to talk to this person, how she became a millionaire overnight, blah, blah, blah. Like I get so many of these pitches and I just kind of look at them and go, oh, I feel you, I hear you, but no thanks. (laughs) So yeah, they're all beautiful conversations with like-minded people. So yay for 99 episodes. 
So you must be wondering, Lol, why change? It was going so well. Everything feels great. And it's it's not like I'm you know, wanting not to be gentle anymore or I'm kind of getting away from the, the gentle business approach. Not at all. So if you're on my email list, also when you download the one page uh marketing plan, saracenacroce.com forward slash one page, you will get future communications from me. So if you are on that email list, you have probably already received the first email and kind of know what I'm talking about. But in case you're not, here's the story. So it started with the Gentle Marketing Revolution book launch during the Random Acts of Kindness Week in February of this year. So February 2021, it felt great. I felt like this was such a great time to publish this book. It felt like it was all coming together. You know, it was after the the, the lockdown, winter was coming towards an end. And it, yeah, it just really felt great and exactly how I had envisioned this launch. Gentle, valuable, and not focused on me, and rather on the idea of kindness in business. So things felt great. Unfortunately, two weeks later, I opened my email to some devastating news. It was a cease and desist letter from a US lawyer representing an entrepreneur asking me to stop using the brand Gentle Marketing with immediate effect as she had just deposited it as a trademark in January of the same year. My plea to discuss and collaborate as gentle markers instead were refused. So yeah, I was in a very, very dark place. I admit that there was self-pity, crying over everything I had built in the last two years, the book, the program, the concept. But it was more than that. It was bigger than that. It was really uh, the fact that my ideal world was shattered (laughs) and and of course, people would call me naive, and I'm, I am a bit naive. I just always see the best in people. Uh, and of course, call me a hippie, but I really believe in the world of abundance and collaboration. This you know, shows in, in other things uh, that happen in my life where I always give people the benefit of the doubt, and sometimes things don't work uh, out the way that I imagined them. So yeah, I won't get into those stories, but they're small little things where I just give a lot of trust and then trust is not returned or I, you know, being taken advantage of, but it doesn't bother me more than that. But in this case, it just really didn't make sense to me. After three weeks in a foggy, depressed state, taking legal advice, talking to hubby and friends, it occurred to me that I still had a choice. I could either invest time, energy, and money into a lengthy legal procedure, or I could choose to accept what was hers according to the legal system that we have in place and instead start over, invest my energy into something positive. And so I think you could guess that I chose the latter. So I signed the settlement agreement, accepting that gentle marketing is a U.S. trademark, and I'm therefore no longer allowed to use it when talking to a U.S. audience. This is the law, according to the United States of America. And since I live in a society that obeys to that law, I agree to it. So we rebranding and I, I need to change all the things that include gentle marketing. That includes the podcast, the book, my site, my programs, the way I call you on the, on the podcast. I can't call you gentle marketers anymore. So a lot of changes, but the new term is just as good if not better. And in terms of the concept and ideology, nothing changes. Over the next month, I'll be slowly telling the story of how I found this new brand. And I'll be sharing it with you here on the podcast in some short little news episodes. Or if you're on my list, you'll also get it via email. Big sigh. (sighs) I see really what happened as a learning 
And yes, I did file the U.S. trademark for the new term, even though I still feel like if someone else wants to use that term in some other context, why not? You know, we can talk. But overall, I'm really excited to see what the next chapter looks like. I feel like the new brand is even better, bigger, more me, more inclusive. And I really think what happened was part of my path. Was it easy? No, man, it was not. In the weeks after receiving the news, I was definitely in a dark night of the soul moment. I thought I couldn't get the strength to start over. I was really upset at this person. I was upset at the outdated legal system. Most people I talked to recommended I fight it. I talked to three lawyers and all of them were happy to take on the case and find the loophole to win. But here's the thing, I didn't want to fight. Fighting about something that's supposed to be gentle and fighting just about something that actually doesn't belong to anybody. The word gentle, in my opinion, doesn't belong to anybody. Our clients don't belong to us. So all of that is just silly to me. And it's a, it's kind of almost a paradox. And so, no, I didn't want to fight to own the term gentle marketing in front of a law and, you know, being represented with lawyers. So, yeah, it was just not aligned with my values. And it's interesting, just around this decision time, Tara Brock published an episode on her podcast where a lady did a meditation based on a concept she called, do no harm, but take no shit. So that's exactly how I felt about this. I was upset that someone was taking away my freedom and I didn't want to let it affect me. But I also wasn't interested in holding a grudge and feeling like a victim. Which brings me to a story that Greg McCowan, the author of Essentialism, my all-time favorite business book, and his latest book, Effortless, told on Tim Ferriss' podcast. I think it's based on a sto- an old story I can't remember, some French author, Guy Montpassant, maybe. I um, can't remember. But it goes something like this. So there's this guy who's living in a village. He's respected in his community. And he's on a walk through town and all of a sudden sees a little piece of string on the floor, which he then picks up because he, could, he thinks, oh, that could be useful one day. And it just so happens that in the same square, somebody else lost their wallet and they see him picking this thing up and they assume and believe it's the lost wallet. They accuse him, they tell everybody uh, about it and basically call him a liar because he insists that it's not true, but they really still judge him and, you know, they don't trust him anymore. So, The story goes on and he just keeps defending himself, but it was just a little piece of string. It was just a piece of string. People by now had forgotten about this and, you know, they moved on, but he was still going on and on about it. He was still talking about it. He ended up getting sick over it, lost his health over it, and eventually on his deathbed, he says it was just a little piece of string. It was a little piece of string. So the man literally died of self-pity. And Greg told this story in relation to forgiveness. And I'm telling it here because I forgive myself that I had the same idea as someone else. I forgive the outdated legal system and the lawyer who was just doing her job. I forgive the fellow entrepreneur who was also just following the system. I forgive and I move on to find my kind of people who want to collaborate and not kill the competition. So that's the story of why I'm changing the name of the podcast and the book and created a new website and all of that. But other than the name, not much will change. It will still, I will still focus the conversations around the seven P's of insert new term marketing, I will still have amazing guests. Our circle will continue to come together each month to support each other. And the only thing that really changes is the term. 
So thanks so much for listening to this 99th episode and and letting me share here. I look forward to continuing to serve you and collaborate towards a different marketing and business paradigm. So stay tuned for some mini episodes during August in which I will slowly (laughs) and with pleasure unveil the new brand. And in the meantime, be the change you want to see in the world. Speak soon.